as to what you can do. You watch successful people and do what they do. Invest in you. Learn something that can help you to begin to make the adjustment to the changes that's taken place in the economy. We, we have conveniences now that we've never had before. You can order food to your house. Organic. Why? Because that's what time it is. When I was a kid, you got an elevator, there's a person there that asked, what floor please? And then technology came and it eliminated that person. We're going through something that's always been with us. Creative destruction. Something that was created to take over a certain position and it destroyed what was there. That's been going on for a long time. That didn't just happen. They have technology to teach people how to speak. Yes, I want to see that artificial intelligence tell you their story and, and touch your heart and tell you the things that they've gone through and the setbacks they've had and what it means to be hungry and how they got fired from the job. You want to position yourself that what you bring is unique. What you bring is indispensable. Technology don't have a heart. Bet on you. Invest in you. Majority of people are not going to make it. Reverend Ike was right. The best thing to do for the poor is not to be one of them. Most people, because they're lazy, because they're are not willing to learn, they're hoping that the government will save them because of fear, because of doubt, they're stuck. And many of them are waiting on God. And God is waiting on them. There's a difference. If it keeps you happy, keep it quiet. The snow goose needs not bathe to make itself white. Neither need you do anything but be yourself. Respect yourself and others will respect you, Confucius. Anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. Obstacles aren't roadblocks, they're road signs. It's never crowded along the extra mile. Wayne Dyer A stoic life. Simply defined, stoicism is the endurance of pain or hardship, without display of feelings and without complaint. Stoicism is a human response to challenge made possible by the fact that we are not merely the byproducts of our circumstances. We are all thinking, self-actualizing beings who have the ability to selectively influence our emotional responses which in turn shapes how we view the world, ourselves, and others. Stoicism is known as an eudaimonistic theory from the Greek eudaimonia, roughly meaning happiness or flourishing. This is meant to be the culmination of human endeavor, or end, telos, which the Stoics defined as living in agreement with nature. Nature is itself a complex and multivalent concept for the Stoics, which in turn means their definition of the goal or final end of human striving is very rich. For example, their idea of living in agreement with nature can also be explained as taking a deeper look into those situations that you can control and those which you cannot. Realizing the need to let go of what you can't control and accepting the facts rather than fighting results in a more harmonious, balanced, and thoughtful life. In modern times, living in agreement with nature means making a conscious effort to make the best of a given situation while being at peace with what you cannot change. You have got to be home. See, most people don't understand what's in you, the presence of God that makes you more than a cockra. That's what's in you, God in you, your hope of glory. 
to manifest that, you got to step out of line. If you want to be successful, watch successful people and do what successful people do. And so I'm saying to you, you have something special. You have greatness in you. Do what works. You know, I was at this event. And this guy spoke and, and he was so boring, he just put me to sleep. The room was as quiet as a graveyard between funerals. They gave him polite applause. And I said, man, that guy was boring. Well, I didn't know I was seated next to his brother-in-law. And his brother-in-law got a little attitude. Said, well, you ought to be that boring and make the kind of money he made. I said, well, how much he made? He said, $5,000. I looked at my watch. I said, he only spoke for about 45 minutes to an hour. He said, that's the kind of money they make. I said, whoa, I can do that. Some of that money's got my name on it. Have you ever seen somebody do something and you say, whoa, if they can do it, I can do it. If you're going to make it today, if our children are going to have a future, we got to do what these young millennials say, stay woke. This is the time to step up. This is the time to be actively engaged in finding ways in which you can use your talents, your abilities, and your skills to build a place for yourself in this new economy. When I was fired from radio, I had to find another way to use my talent, to use my voice, to take care of my family. I had to be willing to learn something new. If you do what works, then that is follow the money. And if you're willing to learn something new, the possibilities are unlimited. Live your life so that when you die, the world cries and you rejoice. Keep your words true. Keep your heart kind and keep your actions necessary. There is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. Buddha. The best way to keep one's word is not to give it. If you change your mind, you can change your life. The mind can go in a thousand directions, but on this beautiful path I walk in peace. With each step, the wind blows. With each step, a flower blooms. Thich Nhat Hanh. When you are about to undertake some task, remind yourself what sort of business it is. If you are going out to bathe, Bring to mind what happens at the baths. There will be those who splash you, those who will jostle you. Some will be abusive to you, and others will steal from you. And thus, you will undertake the affair more securely if you say to yourself from the start, I wish to take a bath, but also to keep my moral character in accordance with nature. Do likewise with every undertaking. For thus, if anything should happen that interferes with your bathing, be ready to say, Oh well, it was not only this that I wanted, but also to keep my moral character in accordance with nature, and I cannot do that if I am irritated by things that happen. Unfortunately, she was in the States without citizenship, and so she had to stay in school in order to eventually get her citizenship. So she did her master's degree, you know, and she was in her PhD, and it was weird. It was just like, yo, E.T., I don't know how it happened, but it was like, yo, E.T., my wife is going to get her degree before you get her, yours. Right? I'm an American citizen. Like, I had already been in the program for a few years, and, you know, she, and, and it was, I don't know, but have you ever heard, like, you know when it's your time? Like, you know it's that moment. It's like, enough is enough. I can't tell you. People have asked me before, Eric, when you get your PhD? I'm like, I'll, I'll get it done. E.T., how far are you in the process? Finish all my coursework. I just got to write the dissertation. But it was something about that night that was different. It was almost the end of the year. And I remember Carl, listen to me very closely, guys. I'm being real with you. I didn't even have a conversation with Carl. Like, we never even talked about it afterwards. I never said anything to him about it. But I felt like I felt this, this guilt 
I felt I felt like this embarrassment. Like, if real, he wasn't like speaking directly to me. He was just saying, you know, AE, I think my wife's probably gonna finish her degree.